My husband's blind, and today we're going to be... Molly, Molly, you're not Matthew. That's, that's Matthew's line. I'm Matthew for the day. <laughs> I'm standing in as Matthew for this video. Okay, okay. It's my okay. role. I can roll with that. I can roll with that. Well, I'm blind. Actually, we're blind, and I'm here with Molly Burke, the well-known blind YouTuber who really blazed the trail for all of us oh. in the blind community. Thank you, Molly. We're going to... Get into some of that today. I'm so excited that you're here. I know everybody watching is extremely excited that you're here with me today. I have already had so much fun. I felt the same, like I've watched you for so long and we've been texting for so long and like I'm just instantly when I saw you and Matthew and Maple, I was like, I need to be their best friend. <laughs> Could I say something about when I got your phone number and I was texting you? I was like, Matthew, I'm texting Molly Burke. I have her phone number. <laughs> You're so cute. Thank you. <laughs> Yesterday, we did a fun little video for your channel in which I taught you how to create some art. And I think it's visible in this shot somewhere. So I don't know. Looky loos can probably see Molly's beautiful it's artwork. It's pretty pro. I'm not going to lie to you. We had way, way too much fun. Like, honestly, way too much fun. I was so nervous because I was like, is any of this going to be fun? Like, I don't know. I'm not a teacher. And you'll see in the video that we shot. Molly schooled me. Like actually by the end I was questioning my whole career. Like why am I an artist? This person who's doing it for the first time was better than me. I will admit my cinnamon bun <laughs> topper was much better than yours. Okay, I will take that badge of honor. Yeah, I love that you are not humble about that at all. It was much better. <laughs> but basically everything else, all you. But no, I mean, I think you have uh, a real talent and it doesn't surprise me because from the moment I started watching your content, I was so impressed. You are, as you've described, a highly visual person. Mm -hmm. You are a fashion icon. As I'm sitting here in my like road tripping <laughs> clothes, like I'm like heading home today in the car okay, for but the people are probably, They're probably saying like your road tripping clothes are <laughs> chic and cool and like obviously very beautifully appointed. But you are also a makeup artist and you express yourself through makeup. And we had some fun with my brushes yesterday because you were- I taught him how he could use his brushes for makeup. That's true. So I would love to know sort of when that visual creativity came into your life and how did that collide with or run in parallel with your vision loss journey? I think I've just always been this way. Like we still have this binder from when I was probably eight years old and I spent like all day just drawing outfits like I was really? a little fashion designer or something oh my and goodness. I my I every time I was around a, a female with a purse mm -hmm. I would be like going through her purse like oh, this wow. like inappropriate I'd be like <laughs> five years old and like my mom's friend would come over and put her handbag down and I would just be like looking through her handbag. Through the handbag like I was like oh what does she keep in her purse right. like I was just always obsessed with fashion I was mm -hmm. definitely the little girl who would like put my mom's makeup on mm -hmm. and now at this stage because your vision loss began pretty young younger yes. than my yes. me actually yeah. our followers know I wasn't diagnosed till I was 16 but you knew about your sight loss mm -hmm. I was diagnosed um, almost was five years old. I was four, wow. about to turn five. That's so young. Yeah. Uh, but at the time, you still had some vision, so you were sort of in that vision loss process. Mm -hmm. And knowing that the future was going to ultimately change your experience, and it didn't obviously inhibit you from continuing to pursue the things that you loved that were very visual. You know, I, I feel like there's no way to ever prepare for vision loss, at least emotionally. Right. Like, yes, you can prepare and that you can learn your skills, mm -hmm. right? Like you can learn Braille and learn technology and it's all of those things, right? The very practical things. But you can't really like emotionally prepare. So even though I knew my whole life that I was going blind, mm -hmm. I say it like we all know our mom or our dad will likely go before us. But that doesn't mean you're like emotionally prepared to lose them. Right. Like just because you mentally know that your parents will probably likely die before you mm -hmm. doesn't mean you're like prepped and ready for when they go. Right. Like, like I got this covered. Yeah, right. once, once you actually lose that person, mm -hmm. That's when you grieve. That's when you feel the emotion. That's when you mm -hmm. feel the impact because that's when it's actually affecting your everyday life, right. right? So it was like that for my vision loss. Like I, I knew right. cognitively that I was going to lose my vision, mm -hmm. but when I lost it, it was still like an immense amount of 
of grief and anger and resentment and all of those kind of negative emotions, like the, the real seven stages of, of grief yes. or whatever they are. And for you, that most of that vision loss happened around the age of 12, right? The dramatic... 14. Oh, it was 14. 14. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And, oh my gosh. And what a time because, I mean, yes. you know, being a teenager yes. is You're already hard like enough. in middle school, about to enter high school, going through puberty, trying to, mm. like, maybe you're starting to discover your sexuality and right. you're starting to maybe date. You're yeah. starting to discover your own sense of style and self-expression through mm. through makeup or fashion or whatever it might be like that's mm. that kind of really pivotal age where yeah. it's no longer like your mom shopping for you but you're starting to pick clothes and um yeah so it was like a really it's a hard time because everybody around you is angsty yeah yeah um, exactly. and then you're going through that <laughs> yeah as well as something much more significant i wanted to ask you about how your relationship with makeup and fashion changed after that dramatic vision loss you know what? I think I leaned on it more than ever at wow. that time. Okay. Like I really like leaned into makeup and fashion as a way to express how I was feeling internally. Wow, incredible. Um, and so I became what back then you'd call like an emo or scene kid. Oh, know? really? Like, I really went into that fashion, like <laughs> the bright colored hair and the oh, dark makeup. Oh, I love makeup it. How many the... hair colors did you do? Oh, I've had many. <laughs> <laughs> the whole rainbow spectrum. I've had sure. many. I, blue and green, I think, are really like the only ones I haven't done. Okay, I did blue and capacity. green. Did I did you? Blue. Yes, so I did. So you covered it all we covered. for me. Together, we've got we've the whole the rainbow. rainbow. <laughs> um, so yeah, for me, it was just like more than ever needed a, mm -hmm. a vehicle to show the world like the anger and the pain and the dark, the literal darkness that right. I felt internally. Yes. Like I wanted to express that externally so people could almost in a way like see my internal pain or anguish. Yeah. Now I think something I know a lot of our followers would be really interested in hearing you talk about is something that you told me yesterday that just really mm -hmm. hit because I have a bit of my, I have some usable vision and that's how I'm able to create art and I have that little like straw vision. Yeah. So I can still see a little bit. Your vision is completely, it's gone now. Except yeah, for it's some, a little light and shadow. A little light mm -hmm. and shadow. Now, so when you were dyeing your hair different colors and wearing all these cool colors and couldn't actually see the colors, you yesterday said to me that it was a feeling mm -hmm. that sort of comes over you when those things happen. Can you describe what that's like? Because it's so, it's it's a non-visual and yet yes. it is at the same time. Yeah, it's so hard to explain because yeah. I personally don't have visual memory. Right. And like when I close my eyes, I can't like conjure up images of things when people describe them. I say that I create mental images. I say that I create mental maps, but it's not a visual. It's mm -hmm. like a feeling. Wow. So even when I'm like- It's like a sixth sense. It's really weird. Yeah. It's really so hard to put into words. Like colors evoke feelings for me. Whether that's a lipstick that I put on or an outfit that I put on or mm -hmm. the color of paint on the walls in my room. Mm -hmm. Like I feel it. Mm -hmm. And with mental mapping, like when I'm- when I'm memorizing my way around a space, it's like I just take the steps. Like my body goes into autopilot and I just know where to go. It's like a muscle memory mm -hmm. or something. But I, I, that's so interesting. I mean, it really does sound like a sixth sense that comes. I kind in. of say it's like a photographic memory without a photo. Like it's just <laughs> like, my memory is crazy. Like I, I just that. have the best. Oh, Hi, Elton hello. John. Hi, okay. Elton Melton. Elton John is begging for a segue. He's like, oh, it's been Maple's far. coming over. Maple. <laughs> Maple's like, not to be outdone. I no. hear them running hey, around buddy. here. Hey, buddy. Oh, hi. The oh, boys. Maple, the boys are here. Hi, boys. <laughs> okay. Clearly, they're like, you've gone on too long not talking about us. Yes. Um, I would love to talk about your guide dog journey because here on Matthew and Paul channel that we talk a lot about my guide dog journey. Now, you've been a guide dog handler far longer than I. because it's 16 years, <laughs> yeah. which is wild. So it start... Makes me feel so old. Not at... But you're so young. It's just that you started so young. Yes. And I, I have to say that watching your videos and you talk about it, for me was one of the stepping stones that gave me the confidence to take that leap myself. Because it kind of is a leap. A lot of mm. people on their vision loss journeys don't dive right into that. You know, even getting the cane, it's all a step. It's scary. It's every little, step is scary. Every step is scary. Could you tell me a little bit about that first step for you? Was it like gung-ho, I want a dog at, at 14? Yeah, so what happened was I started I started orientation and mobility training with my cane when I was in grade two. Okay, so there is a lot more to that conversation with me and Molly. In fact, we really couldn't shut up, could we, Matthew? Yeah, no. <laughs> no, we did talk a lot. 
and we're gonna show the rest of our conversation. <laughs> Maple! Maple's so excited! Maple's so excited for Molly! We're gonna show the rest of our conversation on next week's episode, but if you simply cannot wait, and you want like Mr. Maple, and you and you you must watch the rest of the conversation. Right now, you actually can. You can go to patreon.com forward slash Matthew and Paul or tap right here to go and watch the whole thing. All me and Molly and Mr. Maple and Elton John. Okay, Maple, you have my attention. (laughs) (laughs) You can't even handle it if I'm talking about somebody else. This is the Mr. Maple Show.